Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 15th of April. Coronavirus cases cross 11,000 mark in India. Pakistan extends coronavirus lockdown, some industries to reopen in phases. And NATO calls on Taliban to cease attack in Afghanistan. Now for all the details. The total number of coronavirus cases in India crossed the 11,000 mark on Wednesday, with 377 deaths reported so far. This comes as India goes into the second phase of a nationwide lockdown to contain the spread of the virus. As India goes into the second phase of nationwide lockdown, the total number of coronavirus cases in India rose to 11,439 on Wednesday, with 377 deaths reported so far. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had on Tuesday extended the countrywide lockdown till May 3rd as the first phase of 21-day shutdown ended. In order to mitigate hardship to the public, the government on Wednesday issued fresh guidelines and allowed select additional activities from April 20th apart from essential services. Health Ministry officials on Wednesday said the focus would now be on controlling the spread of COVID-19 from the affected areas to newer regions. कि हमें इस lockdown की अवधि का सदुपयोग करना है। अब तक हमें जो सफलता COVID management के spread को manage करने में मिली है, उसको हमें further consolidate करना है। इसके तहत देश के हर जिले, उसको hotspot districts, non hotspot districts, लेकिन वहाँ पर cases report हो रहे हैं, और green zone districts जहाँ पर की कोई cases नहीं आए हैं। India's Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan also held a high-level meeting through video conferencing with World Health Organization or WHO officials on Wednesday on measures to combat COVID-19. Giving details of India's preparedness to fight COVID-19, the Indian government has said that there are more than 600 dedicated hospitals across the country to treat patients and enough stocks of medicines and food grain to meet challenges. Two civilians were injured in shelling by Pakistani troops on Wednesday in Rajori district of India, Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan has continued to violate ceasefire along the border with India over the past few days. Two civilians were injured on Wednesday in shelling by Pakistani forces along the line of control in Rajori district of India's Jammu and Kashmir region. Pakistani troops reportedly resorted to unprovoked firing and shelling targeting civilian areas in Manjakote sector of Rajori district. The injured were immediately rushed to a hospital for treatment. Retaliation from the Indian side and exchange of fire were going on till the last reports came in. Pakistan has repeatedly violated the ceasefire over the past few days. Earlier on April 12th, three people, including an eight-year-old boy, were killed when Pakistani troops shelled several civilian areas in Kufwada district of Jammu and Kashmir. Just like its other South Asian neighbours, Pakistan has also extended its prevailing lockdown for another two weeks, with some essential industries being allowed to reopen. Prime Minister Imran Khan announced the decision on Tuesday as the death toll from COVID-19 touched 100 in the country. Pakistan on Tuesday extended its nationwide shutdown till April 30th to mitigate the coronavirus crisis but this time with reopening of some industries in phases. The first industry to reopen would be construction, Prime Minister Imran Khan said in a televised address to the nation, adding that restrictions on gatherings of more than five people would continue. 
The announcement came after some prominent clerics demanded to lift restrictions on congregational prayers at mosques in Pakistan. Lockdown, we have done it. जब सिर्फ 26 केसेस थे पाकिस्तान में, वो लॉकडाउन आगे भी लेके जा रहे हैं, मस्जिद, स्कूल, कॉलेजेस, जिधर गैदरिंग्स हैं, जिस तरह स्पोर्ट्स मैचेस हैं और कोई भी जिधर पब्लिक सिनेमास, जिधर पब्लिक जमा हो सके, वो तो लॉकडाउन रहेगा अगले दो हफ्ते भी। Clerics and leaders of religious parties in the world's second largest Muslim country gave a joint statement on Tuesday, saying prayers were essential for Muslims and should be allowed as long as safety measures are observed. This came despite an assurance from PM Khan that he would meet with religious scholars to work out a collective strategy for congregations with the advent of the holy month of Ramadan when mosque attendance usually spikes. مساجد فنکشنل ہوں گی ہاں اس بات کی ہم نے اہد کیا ہے کہ جو سوشل ڈسٹنس کا طبی مشورہ ہے اس کو مینٹین کیا جائے گا The congregation restriction has provoked a backlash in Pakistan with attacks on police for a second straight week last Friday as they attempted to halt prayers at a mosque in Karachi Pakistan which has already completed a three week lockdown has reported more than 6,000 coronavirus cases with over 110 deaths. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have accused Pakistan of discrimination at the time of COVID-19 outbreak. They said they are being denied benefits under a cash disbursement program and have not received any relief so far. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have blamed that they are facing discrimination at the time of COVID-19 outbreak as they are being denied benefits under the AHSAS emergency cash program launched by Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. Pakistan government launched the AHSAS emergency cash program under which Rs 12,000 grant is to be provided to around 12 million needy families across the country, including those from illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir. But like all other schemes announced by Pakistan in the past, this too has excluded an already discriminated and deprived people of Pakistan administered Kashmir. Residents blamed Islamabad has always neglected the region and they are also facing problems in getting essential food items amid a lockdown. At least 43 coronavirus cases have been reported amid poor testing facilities in the occupied region. NATO Chief Jen Stoltenberg has called on the Taliban to cease attacks in Afghanistan and to commit to the peace agreement signed with the US in February. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg on Tuesday called on the Taliban to cease attacks in Afghanistan and commit to the peace agreement signed with the US in February. Speaking in a virtual press conference, Stoltenberg expressed support to the Afghan government's move to create a peace negotiating team to talk to the Taliban and US efforts to resolve prisoners' exchange dispute between the two sides. The NATO chief also reiterated the alliance's support to the Afghan security forces. Uh, and therefore, we call on Taliban to cease uh, the attacks uh, to uh, fully implement the agreement between the United States and, uh, and the Taliban and to reduce uh, violence. Because that's the only way towards a, a peaceful negotiated uh, solution. Uh, and, uh, and we strongly support all efforts uh, to uh, initiate uh, inter-Afghan negotiations. Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission or AIHRC on Tuesday said that at least 83 Afghan civilians were killed, 35 civilians were taken hostage and 119 others were wounded 
in different parts of the country following the US Taliban peace agreement. The watchdog held Taliban responsible for 50% of the civilian casualties and blamed other insurgent groups such as Islamic State or Daesh for the rest. In Islam, Sri Lanka, the coronavirus tally has jumped to at least 233 in Sri Lanka with 15 new cases detected in just one day in the island nation. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Sri Lanka has surged to at least 233 with the addition of 15 new cases detected in just one day in the island nation. Director General of Health Services Dr. Anil Jasinghe on Tuesday said the new cases of coronavirus infection were identified within 24 hours and confirmed that all the patients were found at various quarantine centers. The patients were known to have closely associated with coronavirus patients. Seven patients have died and 63 patients have recovered from the virus so far in Sri Lanka. There were, however, no new cases reported on Wednesday according to the latest data by Sri Lanka's Health Promotion Bureau. The island nation has been under an indefinite lockdown to stem the spread of the virus. Amid the ongoing shutdown to contain the spread of coronavirus in India, a man dressed as the country's iconic freedom fighter, Mahatma Gandhi, distributed face masks and hand sanitizers to people in a bid to make them aware of the pandemic. An artist in India's temple city of Bhutaneshwar donned robes resembling iconic freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi to generate awareness about the deadly coronavirus and spread message of practicing social distancing and staying indoors during the ongoing lockdown imposed to limit the outbreak. Sairam painted his body with silver colour and wore Indian traditional dress to replicate Gandhi's look and was seen distributing masks, sanitizers and requesting people to stay indoors recently. I requested everyone to maintain social distance and give them masks and give them masks and our national flag and I got it and I got it in the slum and I got it in the slum. Like many other provincial governments in India, authorities in Bhubaneswar have also made wearing face masks compulsory for all while stepping outside their homes to contain the spread of COVID-19. As per the orders, stepping out of homes without masks will be an offence inviting a penalty. Facing a surge in demand for face masks amid COVID-19 outbreak, a women's self-help group in India's Jammu and Kashmir region has started stitching masks for frontline workers and public. In order to provide a helping hand to the society and earn a little, members of a women's self-help group in Udhampur district in India's Jammu and Kashmir are stitching face masks amid the COVID-19 outbreak. Women working under Umid, a Government of India project, are trying to produce hundreds of masks within two to three days, citing surge in the demand. So now we are putting effort that we will give them at least 10,000 in 2-3 days. So now there is a lot of work in the market, in the fabric, in the thread, but we are still trying to make it all. The Umid program under the Jammu and Kashmir State Rural Livelihood Mission is a centre-sponsored scheme to encourage women to be self-dependent and self-sufficient. So at this time, all ladies have so much मतलब इस कोरोना वायरस की वजह से बहुत सारे प्रॉब्लम आ रही थी तो हमें सबसे पहले इसका शुक्रगुजार है कि हमें इसकी वजह से हमें कोई काम मिला है। So far, about 50 women have joined hands with the self-help group in Udhampur who are producing face masks. While some make the masks together, some stitch them individually at their homes, putting emphasis on social distancing amid COVID-19 spread. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Coronavirus cases cross 11,000 mark in India. Pakistan extends coronavirus lockdown some industries to reopen in phases. And NATO calls on Taliban to cease attacks in Afghanistan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.